Bridge of Days, Richard from the Winer. Yo, hi guys, welcome inside our fantasy huddle of Lawrence Shahadi alongside senior fantasy football writer Dave Richard. And when you're talking about T.O., not a lot of fantasy relevance this whole season. I know it was against the 49ers, but 213 yards, he's not whining anymore. Yeah, and neither are his fantasy owners, Lauren. What an amazing game for Terrell Owens. He had over 100 yards receiving in the first half. 213 yards in the, in the game, a touchdown on the way. Now fantasy owners can look back and say, this is the T.O. that I've come to know and love. And how did he do it in this game? He had Tony Romo back, and Romo was throwing the deep ball better than he has since he left with the broken pinky. And now that he's able to get this deep ball back in the rotation, back in the Dallas game plan, you've got to expect Terrell Owens to be a threat week in and week out. The only catch here, Lauren, is that the Cowboys have a difficult schedule down the stretch. It's going to be a little tough for T.O. to keep up. Well, keeping up a 200-yard per game pace is impossible. But even getting 100 yards a game down the stretch, T.O. usually does well at the end of the year. I think a little bit about him getting to that mark against the tougher matchups. He's still got Baltimore. Uh, I think there's Steelers. a game. With, yeah, the Steelers. So he certainly has his fair share of tough, tough matchups. He took advantage of an easy matchup here. That's why he did so well. He's still going to be startable. You have to start him at this right. point. But, you know, he's not going to have 100 yards a game. Okay, he did well, as did Randy Moss. And Dave, the common thread between those two is T.O. has uh, Tony Romo, and Randy Moss has Matt Castle going off. Those quarterbacks are getting them into the end zone. Randy Moss three times. Excellent, game. excellent logic, yeah. Lauren. And really, Matt Castle has turned the corner on his career. It's been a crash course for him ever since Tom Brady went down with the knee injury in week one. And now Matt Castle, back-to-back 400-yard -back games, the first quarterback since Billy Volek in 2004, to make that mark happen and really Matt Castle playing well throwing deep Randy Moss in single coverage against Miami it all fit together and now here's a wide receiver that's got an excellent schedule down the stretch only the Steelers stand in Moss's way that's next week week 13 Randy Moss against the Steelers it's gonna be a tough matchup for him but you know that the Patriots are gonna throw Randy Moss a must start the rest of the way nice to have him back absolutely as is a must start Brett Favre leading his team over the un previously unbeaten Titans. I think that he's exactly what the Jets were looking for. And when you when I talked to people earlier in the season, they said the Jets are 8-8 eight eight, with or without uh, Brett Favre, but they aren't. Well, not yet. They're not 8-8. Eight eight, I don't think they're going to get yeah. to 8-8 eight eight at this point. Uh, frankly, they're a good football team, and their recipe for beating the Titans in Week 12 was run a balance offense. Brett Favre didn't have the ball in his hands on every single play. They used Thomas Jones. They did everything on an effective, balanced basis to get the ball into the end zone. They did a real nice job. Can't say enough about Jones or Leon Washington, of course, Brett Favre, the glue of this offense now. He's not doing a ton of stuff with his wide receivers. Lavernus Coles had the touchdown, but Coles and Cotter, it's either one of them each week has the good game. Dustin Keller's really started to step up for them, too. I think Favre is still a number one fantasy quarterback, but I'm just not sure if he's ever going to give you 300 yards a game. He hasn't done it yet this year. How about another team out of New York, Derek Ward picking up the slack for Brandon Jacobs. Is he going to continue because Jacobs is going to come back against D.C.? Well, Derek Ward is good for at least 50 yards a week, and that's 50 total yards per week. So if you've got Derek Ward on your team, you're looking at a guy that you're going to get at least five fantasy points out of each week. If you're in a deep league, that's not so bad. Ward stepped up, had a good game in place of Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs was inactive for the game. He might start playing again in week 13. That's something you're just going to have to follow with us this week here on CBSSports.com. Eli Manning, three touchdowns in a game against the Cardinals. Tom Coughlin said it best. He said that we're just doing whatever we need to do to win, and Eli Manning is certainly a part of that. Manning isn't going to have three touchdown games every single week. 240 yards, that's high for him based on what we've seen over the last several weeks from Eli Manning. So he's on the fence as far as a number one fantasy quarterback. Lauren, here's the question I've got. Plasco Burris left the game in the first quarter. So Eli Manning had this day effectively without Plax in there. Plax is supposedly his best wide receiver. I think Eli stumbled onto something here where he's spreading the ball around, using all of his different targets. I believe he had at least two, two connections with seven players, seven different players on the That's Giants. That's finding ways to win right there. Finding ways to win. And Eli Manning isn't going to give you huge fantasy numbers, but he's going to be an effective quarterback for the Giants. He'll make the role players on the Giants effective fantasy players. Manning, just, just like I said, maybe a top 15 fantasy quarterback each week. Okay, Michael Turner had a huge role this year, and we talked this week, and we talked about him not really producing yeah. when he doesn't have a good matchup, but he proved everyone wrong. Well, Carolina, there's got to be something wrong with their run defense because Michael Turner 
did what he did against the Carolina Panthers without rushing for even 20 yards on any single carry. Four touchdowns in the game. He wasn't put in at the goal line. Panthers didn't turn the ball over at the goal line, and it was an easy touchdown for Turner. Turner earned every single bit of the stats that he got in Week 12. I think he's arrived as far as the NFL goes. He's got a great offensive line, great offensive game plan there. They really rode him. They didn't use Matt Ryan in this game. He just has a pair of tough games starting in Week 15. You know, Week 15 and Week 16, that's fantasy championship time, and people want to win their leagues then. And Turner's got tough matchups during that time. It's going to be, he's got Tampa Bay, and then he's at Minnesota. It's going to be tough sledding for him. But you ride him out until then, and then wait and see what happens. Speaking of tough, Dave, a tough game for Donovan McNabb. His backup, mm. though, not much better. Yeah, not much better at all. Uh, Donovan McNabb has been named the starter for Week 13. It's a short week. It's against Arizona. So you see these numbers, and you think, oh, I'm staying away from Donovan McNabb in all of my fantasy leagues. Yes, again, you might want to consider starting Donovan McNabb in Week 13. Remember, the game's on Thursday. Arizona is the opponent. Arizona's flying from the West Coast to the East Coast. Short week, short rest time, and they've allowed 21 passing touchdowns on the season. Donovan McNabb has a shot. He's fighting for his job. There's no doubt about that. He has a shot to put up two or three touchdowns in the game, maybe a couple hundred passing yards too because they're not going to get anything out of their running game. Brian Westbrook is playing hurt. In my mind, he's no better than a number three fantasy running back. McNabb is the Philadelphia offense right now because Brian Westbrook. He's hurt and you can tell. He's hurt and you can tell, and the Ravens exploited him. And I think any NFL defense, even one as bad as the Lions or the Rams or the Chiefs or any of the terrible ones, they'd be able to corral Brian Westbrook at this point too. Serious business here, guys. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for watching. Keep it locked right here on CBSSports.com. Even on Sunday at 11 o'clock, Fantasy Football Today, every Sunday live, 11 o'clock. Good luck setting your lineup. Good luck tonight. See you guys later.